I'm in the hot seat. You are. I've really been practicing this being deliberate. It's sort of amazing. Well, nothing less than that feels as good. It's fun to stumble on conditions that are pleasing, but it's ever so much fun to plan them and practice them and anticipate them and then experience them. Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? It's incredible. Yeah. So I said earlier, because I was the greeter, I'm going to be the first one. I didn't say it to anybody but me. And to us. <laughs> you think what you think is a secret? <laughs> so, I've been listening for a long time, been doing this thing for a long time, and I realized that I wasn't listening. And I wasn't doing. So a year ago, I said, I have one goal, to be happy. Yeah. And I started, like, really after that. Well, Only that, that puts everything in perspective. Because when your intention and attention is upon the way you feel, now your attention is upon your vibrational climate, your point of attraction. It's upon where you stand, which is everything. Because the way you feel is the indicator of what you're doing vibrationally. And what you're doing vibrationally is everything about who you're rendezvousing with, the timing of it, how things are unfolding, your ability to realize it, your ability to translate it, your ability to be at the right place at the right time. Everything is contingent upon your point of attraction, which is evidenced by the way you feel. So a goal to be happy, that's the goal. That's the in the back door, inside work of living happily ever after. And when you think about it, isn't everything you want, whether it's an experience or a material object or a relationship, isn't everything that you want because you think you would feel better in the having of it? So when you, discuss, when you decide to take control of how you feel and you say, let's see, I could be happy or miserable. Mm, let's see. I choose happy. It's not a hard decision. I choose happy. You figured it all out. Good for you. It's, it's not to be missed. Yeah. I, um, so after I decided that, you know, I was, I was kind of messing with it. And I was like, okay, I won't foster a th bad thought for more than three minutes. And then I got down to two. And then I was like, wait a minute. She said 17 seconds. And I'm at 17 seconds now. Someone, I won't even, like, two seconds. Someone asked the question the other day, how do I get rid of doubt? And we said before you get it which is not the answer you want to hear we know it's just irritating but but it but it when you understand about momentum that and law of attraction law of attraction is the reason for momentum so once you get going on a thought that doesn't feel good momentum ensues doesn't it and pretty soon you're remembering things from the past and you're and you're rendezvousing with others that have the same issues and complaints and and then you start creating new experiences that are evidence of the way you've been feeling and so momentum gets going and after and if you're not sensitive to how you're feeling early on so you don't stop the momentum when it's easy in the early stages, as you are describing, but you let it get going, then there's really often not much you can do about it until something breaks the momentum, like going to sleep or meditating. Sometimes someone with a very strong energy can come into your experience and they can dominate it. And if you focus upon them long enough, your energy will shift. But it's like you often... You don't say it, but it's like you mean it. Abraham, I've fallen out of an airplane and I don't have a parachute. And could you please explain to me what my best course of action is now? <laughs> and we say to our imaginary friend that we are imagining conversing with, hang on, it will be over in a little while. Because 
There's really not, momentum is momentum, and sometimes the momentum gets underway. But when you are aware of momentum and you are aware of law of attraction, and you know what we know that when you hold a thought for as little as 17 seconds, more momentum happens because another thought like it joins it. And then another 17 seconds, more momentum and more momentum. And whether it's a thought about something wanted or unwanted, momentum is happening. So if you are not caring about the way you feel, as Esther told us many times in the beginning of these conversations, I think I'd rather be right than happy. You ever been in that situation? Sort of conversing with someone in the beginning turns into an argument soon enough, but you know that your perspective is right and they know that their perspective is right and you really want them to understand that your perspective is right and so you keep talking about it until there's enough momentum that's going that you make your perspective right you will prove Esther would say to us Abraham but it's true it's true why would you not want me to verbalize these factual evidences it's true and we say well, the reason they are factual evidences is because someone made them true by focusing upon them. Do you want to do that too? Oh, that sort of puts fact and evidence in a whole new place, doesn't it? So when you decide that you want to be happy, it sort of makes you not want to watch some of those television programs. When you decide that you want to feel good, it sort of makes you want to put some separation between you and some facts. Some facts that are certain to activate some vibrations within you that are going to prevent you from being one who easily receives what you've put into your vortex of well-being, you see. We're appreciating you bringing up the 17 seconds because we like talking about momentum because this is a conversation about law of attraction because you have a point of attraction that law of attraction is responding to. That's all that we're talking about all day, every day. So when you get it that you have a point of attraction and that you're emanating some signal based upon what's active in your thought process at the time and that that equals your point of attraction and that more thoughts like it are on the way to it. It's like putting your car on the top of a hill and deciding that you'd like to practice gravity and momentum. So you take it out of gear, you take the parking brake off and you just nudge it just a little bit. Doesn't take much, does it? Just bump it a little bit from behind. Doesn't even take 17 seconds, really. Just, just <laughs> nudge it. Just nudge it. And it will begin to move. Now, if you come to your senses, as our friend's saying, 17 seconds, he doesn't let it. He doesn't let the momentum get going. You jump in front of your car and it just bumps up against you. It doesn't hurt you one bit. There's not enough momentum. You, and it stops. But you wouldn't want to be at the bottom of the hill stopping that momentum, would you? And so that's the point that you're making. And it's the most important point because... You do have control over which thoughts you give momentum to and how much momentum you allow. If a train's going 80 miles an hour that way and you want it to go 80 miles an hour that way, you don't want it to happen suddenly. Really, you don't. It would be hard on the contents of the train. <laughs> and you're not going to shift directions, vibrational directions, fast either. But if it is your intention to feel good, to move in the direction of, you understand that all the all the time that you've been living, you've set momentum of desire into motion. And when you hold yourself in resistance to that desire, you don't feel good. When you move in the direction of it, you feel better. If you move in opposition to it, you feel awful. If you're holding right where you are, it doesn't feel so good. But if you begin in the moment that you begin moving in the direction of it, you begin feeling better right away. It takes the pressure off right away. You just so often think that you should be able to figure it all out, that you should off all the answers. I know what I want and I want to know where it is and when it is and who it is and how it's going to come about. We say, don't put that kind of pressure on yourself. Don't demand answers that you are not ready to receive because you haven't practiced the frequency of it enough. Just get general. I know it's going to work out. Things usually work out well for me. I can figure this out. I don't have to figure it out this red hot minute. Things will fall into place well enough. Everything is working out for me. I've been in places like this before. It eases up. It gets better. I know what to do. I can be a deliberate creator. In other words, be general with your statements, but let your statements affirm in the direction of what you want rather than in opposition. And complaining or focusing on what you don't want is affirming in opposition to what you want and it adds resistance to the equation. 
So <laughs> I've gotten happy and I've been so happy and I'm staying happy and you cannot. No one. It's impossible. And I won the lottery. Manifestation is fun, isn't it? <laughs> you won the lottery when you got in this chair. You win the lottery every time you align with Source. You win the lottery when you line up with infinite intelligence. You win the lottery when you find clarity instead of confusion. You win the lottery as you become stable. In other words, there is so much vibrational content. There's so much vibrational currency that you have access to. Manifestations are good indicators, but that happy emotion is as good an indicator. And when you're willing to say that, you see, because there's a big tripping point with so many people who also want to win the lottery. And if you've got your, in other words, that's that thing that we were talking about, about the, the expanse between the debt and where you, the money that you'd like to have in the bank. If you can win the vibrational lottery, the emotional lottery, which you can do with ease right now, and you win it again, and you win it again, and you win it again, because it's under your control. It's not about anything other than you, and 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 you. As you practice that vibrational lottery winning, then all the other winnings, all the other full-blown manifestations of what you want come into your experience. Really good. You know, it was very, it was, it's weird. I was more excited about greeting all these beautiful people that were so happy and, and, and on fire for this workshop. It was more exciting to me. Than winning the lottery? Than winning the lottery. It felt better. It feels, it's what I love. Well, anytime you feel good, this is what's happened. You found vibrational alignment with who you really are. So when you find vibrational alignment with your financial desires, that feels good. When you find vibrational alignment with who you really are to the depths of your being, that feels even better. And that's what you're saying. Really good.